<laughs> okay. Episode 122 of SETI BIMCO, America's foremost revenge theme podcast. Crafting revenge sequels to movies that never had them. Mm-hmm. You're catching us in the midst of our tour of the 50 nifty United States. This week, representing the great state of Illinois, is Home Alone 3. Three. <laughs> Weird. I just got to get through my age-old question, then we can get to everything else. Your old age question, yes. So did, did Linda, the doorbell repair person, did she ever get revenge on the arborist she dated because he constantly asked her if he could count her rings? If he could count her rings, that's all he wanted to do. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> wow. It's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. We're here. Yep. Oh, oh. Sure are. Yeah. And we always pick a number out of a jar. We pick oh, a yes. number out of a jar because <laughs> make more work for ourselves. We're going to talk about this movie, and we're going to say at the end, we're going to ask at the end, who from this movie would be most likely to number 37? Uh, most likely to go to Greece and get run down by a trolley car. Did you write that one? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I started at 38. I, and I also feel like you actually haven't entered mine really into there. You just no, I, did. Yeah. I wrote them on heavier paper. And they oh, all so sunk they to, sink the to the bottom of the yeah, jar. That makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's what Most happened, Most likely George. to go to Greece and get hit by a trolley car. Okay. <laughs> well, they all Are die in this movie, so. There are trolley cars <laughs> in Greece. Well, we'll get to that. You know, maybe it could be a freak accident. <laughs> maybe they jumped over from another, another country. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Got anything to say before we talk about Illinois? I got a lot to say before this, Tim. Oh, we got to say that we were all going to go see... That's what I want to talk about. Deadpool, and I hope your wife is feeling better. She doesn't feel well. Yeah, so here's the story, folks. Uh, In a rare bit of friend unity, um, myself and my wife and Tim and producer Mrs. Lee and Foofy, frequent mentionee on the show, and his partner... And also, uh, Chris, who doesn't listen to the show, Chris, who doesn't listen to the show and his partner had no interest in this. Uh, we all got tickets to go see Deadpool and wait, Deadpool three, a Deadpool Wolverine. That's called. Yes. That's called that. Yep. And, um, unfortunately the, like beforehand, the day before my wife wakes up looking like a, like a banana smashed between two pieces of cellophane, just like. Oh. Stuck to the bed, just like, ugh. And, My- and, and I quote her. I wrote this down. I even just checked this wow. quote out with her just a phone, moment Smash ago. Me. She looks at me and says, a plague is upon this house. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. She's been watching a lot of Game of Thrones. Um, Banana very squish sick. between cellophane. That's how I make dessert. <laughs> yeah, that's how I go just to the know. bathroom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off to a classy start. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's been super sick. So we did not go. Nope. And see the movie. And in fact, I have been also under uh, house arrest too because. Just in case. Uh, she says it feels like COVID. We haven't actually gotten the mm. test the test yet, but this is the sickest I've seen her since COVID. When are you going to so, get a test? Uh, I don't know. When are you going to get a test? You need someone to bring it over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on over. I got a, <laughs> a wet hacking cup. So I've been sleeping in my studio at my home. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I actually, so Tim, in a bit of a departure from the series norm, I actually wrote a list. Already? Yeah. Before we even start. Wow. Before we even start the proper movie, this <sighs> list is things I think probably happened in Deadpool. Okay. Now, I can't say anything. Deadpool though. 3. Well, this is the thing. You can't say anything now. And normally this would be <laughs> a pretty gauche move because uh, spoilers, but by the we record yeah. a bit ahead. By the time... This episode airs. I'll probably have seen Deadpool, and so will everyone listening. So, and that's just even if I guess these things correctly. But I mean, you don't want me to say it to spoil the movie for you. No, right now. No, so I can't no, say you, anything. All right. Well, I will see. I, I can, <laughs> folks. We record this over video, so I could. Stu- I know Tim's face like the back of my hand. You do. I will study him for micro expressions and things, and I'll know. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. 
All right, I can't read all these, so it's a top 10 list, but I might not get up to all 10 because I can't read some what I wrote. Wow. Yeah, number wow. one, uh, Wade says something snarky. Okay, I can't say yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, number two, Mrs. Lee fell asleep. <laughs> no, she did not. No? Okay. She got That's every one. reference except one, so we, we only had to have a small talk. Oh, uh, number three, Wolverine says bub. <laughs> Could be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Number four, Tim pretended to be confused by something, but really knew, but didn't want to admit he did. That ties in with you just said, so I don't I understand ask. why that thing happened there. I did ask why. why uh, the Hulk was see. so mad. Wait, Hulk? I said, why is Hulk so mad? Yeah. Mr. Sin- number five, Mr. Sinister clones somebody, let's say Richard Simmons. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a Kang variant that was played uh, by Home Alone's Daniel Stern and Chuds. Really? Because they true? can't. Use, I don't know. I'm, things I think maybe oh, happened. Oh, oh, oh okay. they can't use the original actor for Kang because that guy is problematic tr- and he's been canceled. Yep. So I figure, you know, Kang's got a whole bunch of variants. Why not Daniel Stern? Yeah. I just thought of like somebody that would be uh, awful. That would be, that would be about the worst. Well, George, not to get too geeky, but if you looked at the news from Comic-Con, the next two Avengers movies are Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. And it seems like they're like, we're not doing Kang. Yeah. They're not doing, and they're just doing Dr. Doom (laughs) with Robert Downey Jr. Kang could have been anybody. I know it's so dumb. And you know what? Also like, I love me some Dr. Doom, but like Kang is one of my favorite villains. Oh, because of Roger that. Stern, the guy wrote some fucking great Kang stories, man. Yeah, he getting did. some comics talk here. Oh, um, that reminds <laughs> oh. me of a side question I need to ask you. Here, number seven, Roy Thomas claims he created Deadpool. Oh, my God. Yeah, he yeah, came on screen. Kind of, <laughs> he did that. <laughs> that guy is getting controversy. Folks, look up after Roy cre- Thomas. After credit scene. Yep. Uh, hmm. Oh, it's called oh. post credit. Sorry. Post credit. Uh, number eight, Alpha Flight <sighs> did not appear in any shape or form. <laughs> Not on the screen. Not on the screen. Uh, Number nine, full frontal nude scene with Colossus. Uh, Not on the screen. It's rated R, I figure. (laughs) I figure he just probably walked around with his big steely Dan out. You know what I'm saying? Not on the movie screen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and then number 10, (laughs) uh, Deadpool was left alone in the X-Mansion, and he set a bunch of booby traps to prevent Magneto and his brotherhood of evil (laughs) mutants from getting in. That would have been good. Right? Yeah. Uh, so that's what I think happened. Let me tell you something that did happen. Yeah. I got a broke chair and it was in the reclined easy chair position. Oh no, the whole time? <laughs> yes. So did you fall asleep? I, I didn't know they could do that. There's electronics. And I'm like, who would put electronics in like a movie theater seat? Because kids are going to break that in one day. Yeah. My, they're all my, very proud of it too. They were like, when I was, busted. when I had to call up to get my ticket canceled, they're like, you know, because I was like saying, which, um, <laughs> I said to him, like, which tables? Because we, we bought a block of tickets. Mm-hmm. I was the person who was the go go for it. So I bought this block of tickets. And I, when I had to cancel one for Nicole and I'm like, which ones have tables between? Like, oh, sir. we Every every recliner has its own devoted table now. They're, they were mm. so proud of that. I'm like, well, just cancel two then, jerks. And you made sure that you said, which one is broken? Because I want Tim to sit in the broken See, I chair. want the broken one for my friend Tim. They're like, Tim, is he the one with the... <laughs> The glasses who comes in and pretends that he doesn't get all the geeky references. I'm like, that's the one. They're like, we got you. They got me. You got Give me. Give me old, the Roy Thomas <laughs> special, they call it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, have you heard this We've, Roy Thomas thing, by the way? Yes, I've, I've read, okay. read that. Just so, so people you, know, Roy Thomas was, um, he is the poor man Stan Lee. He, like, if you read a comic that kind of reads like a Stan Lee comic, but it's not good. Chances are, it's written by Roy Thomas, oh, we're and he's still takes. with us. But uh, he uh, he was the former editor in chief of Marvel, and he was the editor in chief during the period when the very popular character Wolverine was created, created by <laughs> John Romita Senior, Len Wein, and Herb Trimpey. Yes, and they all got credit, but Roy Thomas has demanded his name be added because he was the editor at the time. Nice. This goes against even <laughs> Stan Lee. Never did that. Does he get money if that happens? He's a, clearly he's angling for the money. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> don't, I don't be mean to him. We're just mean to the people who create Lockhorns. Yeah. So. Well, we are. Inexp- <laughs> oh, we're back to that. No, we're not. Back to the poor, poor Lockhorns people. <laughs> I love that we bring up Lockhorns. You know, honestly, we're doing the world a favor because, you know, nobody's talking about the Lockhorns anyway. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> talking about Boner's Ark. Nobody, nobody's <laughs> talking about Boner's Ark except for that person who wrote that very angry Wikipedia article. <laughs> 
Uh, well, should we? So I gave facts. us a good segue right into the movie, but we should do Where facts about Illinois first, right? What was your segue? Show me uh, the segue. It was Deadpool is left alone at the X Mansion <laughs> and builds movie trims. Yeah, it's. I think it's pretty clear there, Tim. All right, Illinois facts. Good one. Illinois facts. Here's Illinois facts. Illinois is uh, an album by Soup John Stevens. Isn't it? Uh, it's I didn't it's know that. single. Yeah, it's the he did that whole album that was all themed about songs about Illinois. Oh, I didn't know he that. He wrote that album. song Chicago, which was the big you've heard that one. It's inexplicably wow. about New York though, mm-hmm. which I think really sums up a lot of Dick Chicago's issues. The before they called it Meet the Be- the Beatles, the Beatles were going to call their album Illinois and they posed with a bunch of meat and puppets. I don't know if you heard about that. They had to take it back and yep. pulp it. You know, uh I know you're making a reference to the infamous Butcher cover of Yesterday yes. and Today. We mm-hmm. had a copy of that in my house growing up. Ooh, worth right? money, George. I, that's what I hear. You don't know where it went? Uh, actually, it's probably at my sister's house because that's where my father's LPs have ended up. Ah, okay. Yep. Um, let's see. What, like, more Illinois facts. Uh, Illinois is oh. also a state. Yeah. It's the sixth largest state by population. Mm-hmm. Um, it fl- is the home of Chicago, third biggest yeah. city in the country. It's called that- the second city because it used to be the second biggest after New York. There's a band rough. from there called Chicago? There's a band there from called Chicago. Tim's favorite band. <laughs> yes. The singer is named Peter, et cetera, et cetera, if I recall. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a home of the famous oh. O'Hare uh, Airport. The it is. Six, one of the six most busy airports in the world, Tim. Named after an Irishman. Named after a, an Irishman, which is why if you ever get up there, you see leprechauns everywhere. Wow. Drunk leprechauns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned Chicago's third most populous city. It's like got a, a population of 2,746,308 people. Very specific. Very I specific, that number. It is. But yeah. I want to say their flag and seal is sensible, unlike all oh. these other flags we've looked oh, at. Oh, it's a goose. It's so, folks, a, you know Tim has eagle. really been latched onto It's an eagle? Yeah, it's just the eagle. That's it. What sort of is it like? You is know, it I like don't... a very American eagle, the eagle, or is it like a, a golden eagle? That tab collapsed and oh. it's not open anymore. And you can't, I mean, <laughs> people don't know. It's like Once quantum you open a tab, physics. it's closed forever. Yeah, it's just yeah, that, it's... that particular fact is like quantum physics. You know, you look at it, you can't observe it yep. without, without destroying it, altering oh, that's it. Stupid. Oh, I say let's just fucking destroy Chicago. <laughs> no, just it's where a, previous Wikipedia episode, page. the uh, Psychotronic Bam, was filmed. Oh, I love that movie. Which we, uh, good episode, go back and listen to it, folks. We had a lot mm-hmm. of Chicago facts in there. Like, I know we talked about the Field Museum, because the Field Museum is a great natural history museum in Chicago, home to yeah. Sue the T-Rex. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They just sent microbes that they scraped from her skeleton into orbit. <gasps> I don't know why. They did? Why? Yeah. Aliens I don't know. Will... I think they're trying to make it, like, rain dinosaurs on us. I aliens, guess that's the yeah. thing. They'll get yeah, it. Aliens, they'll, they'll clone yeah, dinosaurs. Aliens like, oh, yeah. Well, here's an army of uh, marauding Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rexes coming at you. They also um, have, I don't know if I'm yeah. pronouncing this right, Uh-oh. Cahoka Mounds, you know, where giants probably lived. Did you not know yep. there's a lot of I knew, mounds? You know, I had, a, I had a window open about that, but then the Smithsonian came in and closed oh, it. That's right, I was going to say. Because I'm not allowed to know about <laughs> that. So, yeah. I You're don't, way I, ahead of me. Yeah. Let's not talk about joke. it. We're not allowed. Uh, what else? Uh, first streetcar. Oof. Uh, April 25th, 1859. It was uh, in Chicago, not surprisingly. Did it have a 12 number? 12 foot long, sat 18 people, moved to three miles per hour, which is oh, like, might as wow. well walk. Yeah. You might as well, that's the cross down well, bus. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah. Why did anybody take that? <laughs> Couldn't find a fair amount for that, unfortunately. Uh, the first elevator. Now, Tim, mm. I have two bits of information here. Because there's an elevator. And by the way, movie. everything we're talking about here is in Chicago, by the way. Because, yeah. you know, when you have one of the world's major cities, one of the country's major cities, especially, in your state. It's going to take most of the stuff. Um, let's see. Uh, first, uh, steam-powered elevator opened in 1864. Wow. Civil the, War. Uh, they yeah. had elevators and the Civil War. Steam-powered, too. You know that was fraught with peril. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> and then uh, a few years after that, only a few years after that, they uh, in 1870, they added in the first hydraulic elevator. Ooh. I wrote down the names of both of these buildings, but I can't read oh, my no. handwriting. One's like Charles something, and one looks like Barley and Company. Are you sure the other one wasn't Nagasaki Tower with the elevator? It was Nagasaki. Oh, maybe it was the <laughs> Willis Tower, better known as the Sears Tower. <laughs> oh, That's a big, wrong? tall building in Chicago. No, Nagasaki Tower. That, wait, that was Die Hard. That was in, that was in L.A., right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Was, why, yeah. Why? So wrong. So they they yeah, could have moved okay. it. 
on yeah, a train. Could have, yeah, that happens a lot where they move skyscrapers from. Remember when New York City, <laughs> the, uh, the Empire State Building, Empire State Building used to be in Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, and they moved up on a train. Yeah, that's why they're angry. That's why. Yeah, that's why Florida is angry. Oh, Illinois, uh, Illinois is called the "Leave Me Alone" state. That's why so many kids get left alone there. I guess. <laughs> is it really it's, called the "Leave Me Alone" state? Sure. I did say it's called the Prairie State, but I didn't bother reading why. Oh, Little House. I assume because it has little prairies. House? Maybe it's Little Houses? Yeah. No, uh, that's, where, that's where Laura lived. Little House, maybe? Didn't she live in Kansas? Uh, maybe. Because remember that series ended where like a strange rocket ship lands in a field and she goes and finds a baby in it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And she changes her name to <laughs> Kent. Years. Years are all yep. off there. I don't know. Superman was 1939. She was in... Uh... They went into the future once on Little House. Did you know that? Once. No. Wait, really? The, the opening starts with a table being sold at an uh, auction. Oh. It's, it's a valuable table, and they close up on the table, and it's got uh, Ingalls Wilder. Oh, my God. Was it the by... table that was it the table that Charles, uh, Charles Ingalls was beheaded on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why it was worth so much money. Wow. And they go back in time and show him build the table. But you didn't know I was a Little House fan. I, you know, I think I did know this because you mentioned it a bit. <laughs> like, like there was a previous episode of Seti Vimco where you kept calling a character Nelly. Yep. I have one more factoid about uh, Chicago or Illinois yeah. before we... All right. So deep dish pizza is a staple of Chicago cuisine. If you've... It, I, people make a lot of it. I have learned not to mention to people in Chicago because they get very defensive and angry about it. I know. Espe- they view me, a New Yorker, because New York famous for its pizza. They're like, you are just out to belittle our pizza. Look, your pizza is not for me, but that's okay. I know. Deep dish pizza. It's got like a crunchy crust, like a lot, like so much sauce is just to be soupy. And then like so much cheese as to make a guy like me who's lactose intolerant <laughs> die. So, I was on, a, um, on, a, on my, one of my book tours. They took me out for deep dish pizza. Oh. I said, hold it, hold it. I'm just getting a text. I found out I'm a Wait. clue on Jeopardy. Wow. <laughs> Who sent the text, Tim? I think it was, uh, was President, it Al Ford, President Ford. President Ford. Wait, Former President Ford. Wait, President Harrison Ford from <laughs> Air Force One? Yeah, that's right, from Air Force that's One. That's amazing. And he said, get off my plane. <laughs> All right. So this movie, George, people are probably yep. wondering. Yep. Why? Why? <laughs> like well, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so let's talk about this, Tim. This was my choice to choose. Um, if you are an avid listener of Seti Bimco, you know that we utterly shat the bed when it came time to do Massachusetts. <laughs> Tim chose a shitty movie that was actually filmed in Texas. <laughs> yeah, we did. We shat the bed. And I wanted to do a film that like really captured some some nature of the state. So I, I was thinking of movies, looking I, – I actually went to the Illinois Board of – film production and stuff. Wow. A lot of films are for, filmed in, in Chicago. And a lot of films are filmed in part there. Like, you know, Supergirl. Supergirl. Had one scene filmed there. Tim sent it to me like, oh, do this one. Tim sent <laughs> another movie to me to do. Like, this one called Land of the Prehistoric Monsters. It's Folks, mistake. I looked it up. It was literally filmed in the Soviet Union. Mistake. <laughs> like, so Tim can't be trusted. But like, you know, Batman movies have been filmed in part there. But when I was thinking of movies I knew that were filmed in Chicago, my mind went to uh, John Hughes. And somehow I never really realized this before. Like every John Hughes film is set in Chicago. Just about. Or in Illinois. Yeah. And John Hughes. So, yeah. I wonder how you feel about him. I'm like, I neither hate or love John Hughes. I would Some people concur. love. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's got That's a few good. movies there. I, I really am quite fond of Ferris Bueller, though it's been years oh. since I've seen it. thought you were going to come at me. No. And I like um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, but it kind of coasts to a, a sappy end. I'm like, I like the rest yeah. of it. Well, he tends to be, I think he tends to be very um, maudlin almost, right? He does. Yeah. But that last like scene, that last scene, I don't know, John Candy. You wanted, you wanted John Candy. You just wanted them to like go in his room and find him dead for like three weeks <laughs> no. later, right? He just lays Bones down. Bones run out of his face. They have extra room for him and he just like yeah. farts all night. It's just, just the end. That's the end scene. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> add, add a joke at the end. <laughs> Easiest joke. I feel like, Tim, I feel like if that movie ended... With him sleeping in the room and like Steve Martin and his wife just hearing like big old John Candy sized beefers coming. Yes. I feel like people would think that was the end of the movie and they would feel like the movie ended abruptly. They're like, wait. <laughs> so we, we get this moment of closure and instead of like the characters learning more about each other, he just goes in the room and farts all the time. 
No, that's just they go to bed at night. That's Steve Martin and his wife look at each other, hear that. The end. There you go. Oh, brother. <laughs> it says, part two coming next year. Uh, planes, trains, and <laughs> I'm not doing a sequel. Emissions. I, I did enough work doing a sequel right. for this damn that's movie. That's true. So anyway, damn so movie. I went through the movies and like it did occur to me, I got kind of excited about the concept of doing Home Alone. Okay. And but then I'm like, one. but Home Alone, yeah, Home Alone, you know, I, 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 I've noticed in SETI Bimco, I bring up Home Alone a lot. Oh, yeah, Just funny. Yeah, I do. Especially the Wet Bandits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yes. it's weird. It's not like it's one of my super favorite movies. It's just, there is something that's funny about it. Like a kid left alone who does, uh, wreaks horrible violence upon some low level criminals trying to break in. But I'm like, but you know, the first movie is the one that's set in, in, in Illinois. But the second one is famously set in New York and it's a sequel. So I'm like, well, Home Alone 3. I remember that existed. Yep. So Home Alone 3. And we knew it was bad. Yeah. It is written by John Hughes, which like stunned me. Wait, I think I found he produced, but another guy co-wrote. He he produced and wrote it. Hmm. I saw He co-produced and wrote it. Because, did you see early drafts? This did start out as a Kevin McAllister film. Really? It was going to be Kevin. Too it was, old. Exactly. He would have been like a teenager and they're like, they had to rewrite it. And that, I think that's probably why the stakes are raised so dramatically in this one. <laughs> Previous ones, it's like, they're trying to break into the house. This one, it's like literally like high espionage. Yes. Spies like from Korea. Like, yeah. Like people from North Korea are stealing missile technology. It's like, <laughs> what? Wait, what? Um, so it's, yeah, it's a whole new, whole new cast, whole new group of kids, a whole new family. Still we, Illinois, though. Yes. And we talked about this before. You seem shocked that the original kid, Kevin. Uh, Macaulay Culkin? Yes. Or, had, or to me, a, the character. No, him in real life. He had a problematic, you know, he was one of those problematic uh, child stars. Things didn't go well. His dad See, was I abusive. Thought, his I sister his died of sucks. a drug overdose. Um, Is that true? Yeah. And he he had troubles with drugs and he had to. He like sued his parents to separate so that they wouldn't try to get all his money, that kind of stuff. It just was. I knew all that. I didn't know that he actually had problems with drugs. I thought he just like, there was a bit where he got arrested. Some stuff so I don't, with, I, yeah. Personally, I don't know what drugs he did, but he got arrested. Anyway, so. Macaulay Culkin, good person. Um, t- Tim, not, did you, I found out in researching this movie, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, you know, this is not a Kevin McAllister film. It's just like another kid who lives in like a very similar neighborhood under very similar circumstances. His name is Alex. Alex and the actor playing him is named Alex too. Oh, it's confusing. Suspicious. I know. Um, <laughs> did you see that there actually is a home alone four that is about Kevin McAllister? I did see that, but <laughs> recast. recast. And this one is amazing. I have to find this one. It was made as a TV movie for the wonderful world of Disney. Ooh. Um, was it British? New- I, don't, I don't think so. Okay. Well, is wonderful world of Disney British? Yes, it is. Did you hear their accent? So, Get this. You know, we've talked before, like, in just mentioning, like, I don't think you come back from leaving your kid in a home alone when you go to Paris. Not today, no. I think that ruins your family. <laughs> it does. And then you do it again in New York. I don't remember what happens in New York. Don't I? But, never, no. So the, in the fourth movie, which is the third installment to the McAllisters, even though they're all new, new actors, <laughs> um, the dad and mom are getting a divorce. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, but get this. This is the plot as near as I can remember from reading the synopsis. Uh, the dad has a new girlfriend, and he makes the kids stay with her for, uh, yeah, like for a holiday. You making this and up? No, this is all true. And it's some weird thing where, like, the girlfriend is actually the bad guy, and she is I – know, I know a guy – I know French Stewart plays Marv of the Wet Bandits and Marv has a wife and that's the new bad guys. But there's also a weird plot involving a ro- like a royal family and okay. the dad's girlfriend is trying to kidnap someone. It's weird wow. sounding. And did John Hughes write this? No, John Hughes has, <laughs> unlike the other three movies, John Hughes has nothing to do with this okay. And the movie ends where they, uh, Kevin McAllister exposes the various evil doings and somehow his parents get back together. So I'm like, what? Oh, it's like the parent trap. That's another thing. You don't get back. If you're already living with another woman, no. and it doesn't matter if she gets <laughs> what she gets arrested for. You don't get, you, you don't come back from that. Your marriage is over. Well, there's hope sometimes, George. No, there isn't. <laughs> no hope. All right. 
the father in this movie, he's played by Huey Lewis. I don't care what you Who's, say. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that not true, folks, but he he did. This movie was full of vaguely familiar faces. Oh yeah, and Scarlett Johansson, like she's twelve or something. Yeah, she's um, a, she's nine, this movie, by the way, this movie, nineteen ninety eight. Scarlett Johansson plays his older sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, unknown redhead kid plays his older brother. <laughs> um, let's yeah, see. The, the main character of Alex is played by the child actor Alex D. Linz. I actually thought he was really good. Uh, with, uh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm also going to say this. If this movie wasn't called Home Alone 3, like I wouldn't it wouldn't be a great movie, but this is not a bad movie. Like I'm like this is a pretty good movie. It should just it should be called the Kid Genius. Just make him a genius. Yeah, I mean he is clearly. <laughs> so this I thought this was interesting. You would relate to this, Tim. I was uh as you know, we looked this up on Wikipedia and one of the measures of quality is whether or not there's blue links in names. Oh, that's right. So I was following a lot of these blue links to see what else the people did. Main character Alex, played by Alex D. Linz. I clicked in his, and right at the top of his thing, there's a big thing that says there is a dispute whether or not this this Wikipedia entry meets notability requirements. What? Right? Yeah. And I, I first off, I'm like, this guy fucking starred in Home Alone 3. He's notable enough. But it made uh, me think of you, Tim. Oh, because mine got yanked down. Listeners, if you don't know this, Tim, my co-host... New York Times bestselling author, New Yorker cartoonist, <laughs> Zodiac Killer. He had somebody actually wait, yanked his Wikipedia page down. Yep. Yep. Saying he wasn't notable. So, like, you're a good company, your, you and the kid from Home Alone 3. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Keep your enemy, uh, enemy close. Oh, you <laughs> saying it's me? That was the person you least suspect. Wait, this is Lee's. This is Mrs. Lee. Uh, let's see, who else was in it? Uh, there was uh, Mrs. Nobody. Pruitt, his mom. She was she was in Gremlins too. I remember her from Gremlins too. Like, oh really? I, have to say, I didn't even see that. The, yeah, she was also in Sixteen Candles. Ooh. The woman playing her, Haviland Morris. This woman is smoking hot. Oh my god! <laughs> Jeez, <I'm just> <laughs> I did not notice. I'm like, wow, are you kidding? I'm like his mom is smoking. <laughs> I like this mom. Um, and then there was the now instead of just there being two wet bandits, there are four international yes. spy thieves. There's Mister Boupre. Who is the leader? Wow, you wrote There's their names Alice. down? Yeah. This whole There's time Alice, just... the only woman. They just call her Alice, but Alice. I guess her last name is Ribbons. <laughs> There's Mr. Jernigan, who looks like, uh, I kept thinking he was Alec Baldwin. And uh, my favorite is Mr. Unger. Did you look this guy up, Tim? No. Actor's guys. name is David Thornton, better known as the husband of Cindy Lauper. Whoa. Yep, girls just want to have fun's own. If you listen to previous episodes of Seti Bimco, Tim was on a five-week tirade talking about the <laughs> 1982 episode, uh, video, video for that song. Yeah. It's got problems. It's got problems. And now you, <laughs> this guy, that guy is... Which one? The one who got his hair cut? Uh, he was the one with the long hair. Whoa. Yeah. Look, yeah, he looks like so a Mr. B- Mr. B- Mr. Bupre is the one who was the leader. I just call him bad guy number one and two this whole time. They're like, we're not going to look these people Alice up, is the woman. Mr. Jurgen's the guy with the very blue eyes who gets the weird haircut. Yeah. And then Mr. Unger is the guy with the long hair who gets like, they, so, they all get horribly mutilated as this film goes on. They, they basically, if we could start, they, they, they have the same bag as an older lady. They got Mrs. Their, Hess. Their, their computer chip hidden in a toy car and Mrs. Hess takes their bag by accident and they take her sourdough bread. Her yep. sourdough. Well, the computer chip you're talking about, we mentioned this briefly. They are working for the North Korean government yes. and they Missiles. are smuggling a uh, computer chip that would let a missile go enter U.S. airspace undetected. Wow. They stole it from Silicon Valley and they're going to smuggle it to North Korea. But going through the check, they're where they have a Parisian bag. Going through uh, checkout, the lady before them holds them up slightly, and Mrs. Hess, the elderly neighbor of our main character, yep. takes the wrong bag and starts this whole thing. They eventually yep. figure out, but too late, that she went to, to Chicago. Chicago. He's Chicago. Like, We're going to Chicago. She's like, where it snows? He's like, yeah, where it snows. Wow. But do it like in their voice. Like we are going through Chicago, and they are very. Did they talk like they? They lost that accent for after a while. No, the one guy, the one guy, Mr. Bupre, had an accent the whole time. <laughs> and what kind uh, of accent was it? Polish, as it turns out. I looked them up. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I no, they were how. like these. I just want to stress to everybody, with the exception of Sidney Lauper's uh, husband. 
these were like very much like diehard characters. They were. <laughs> like these were oh, like, well, that's why he had long hair. He was like a diehard diehard. I think character it was. Too. I think it was on purpose. It was very much like that sort of type of like they're not it's not Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern as like semi inept criminals. These guys, we see them do some real fucking spy shit. <laughs> and and also they're basically trying to smuggle in a device that's going to let North Korea send missiles to the United States and yep. kill presumably lots of people. So the stakes yeah. Are much higher. High. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to what they could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that comes but. in later. So Mrs. Hess grabs the wrong thing. And then we, we come to a snowy old Chicago or outside of Chicago. Because little it's Alex is shoveling Highland her walk. Highland Park. Yeah. The main character is shoveling her, her walk. And he's scratching his butt and everything. And she gives him the toy car because she doesn't know where she well, got she it. Well, she says specifically, didn't your mother tell you it's not, it's rude to... Dig at yourself like that while no. talking to somebody. He's like, Rrr. no, in the and presence then, of a lady, George. In the presence of a lady, because yes. George, Go, I have a little list. A list? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> she says you shouldn't scratch yourself there in the presence okay. of a lady, and I have a short list of other things you shouldn't do in the presence of a lady. Number one, Tim knows this, everybody, by the way, because Tim yes. has been arrested, as I mentioned <laughs> multiple times. It's often for doing stuff in front of ladies. <laughs> Number one thing you shouldn't do in the presence of a lady: explain the spider clone saga to a group of adults. <laughs> Around or near the YMCA. Wait, hold on. Question. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I thought it was stuff to do to a lady. Why did you add it to a group of adults? You <laughs> no. shot your own joke in the no. foot. No. Yes. Not in the presence of a lady. But, okay, wait. So if it was just, say, like, you, me, Chris doesn't listen to the show, and Foofy. A group and of adults who are not ladies. Like yeah. You already screwed up your joke. All right, go on. Number two. Yeah. <laughs> In the presence of a lady, you should not leave an upper decker in the public restroom of, of the YMCA. Why YMCA, everyone? <laughs> well, maybe upper we'll find out in number three. Do we think our audience <laughs> knows what upper deckers are? No, I'm not going to explain. I think you should explain what an upper decker is, Jim. <laughs> number three, <laughs> should never put on your one-man show called How I Sneak into the YMCA and Cry Alone in the Locker Room. Never do that in the presence of a lady. All right. There you go. Sounds to me like you're really for segregation <laughs> of certain activities by the sexes. And, in the YMCA, yes. Yeah, and the YMCA specifically. Would you be okay with it at the YWCA? Well, that's that's weird because he's a guy. That's all. Okay. My what character, is gender, but a my character is man, a man, <laughs> a child man, right. <laughs> or a man child. Uh, so this the woman. Lady. She's crouching. It's, it's 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 an ongoing thing too, where like she did, was the only house in the neighborhood that wasn't shoveled, because this is like like all Home Alone's uh, is set over Christmas time. It's not. And I read it. This is not Christmas time. It's just yeah, he's homesick. They no, Tim. They say that in Wikipedia, and I I made a point of watching. Like there's literally Christmas wreaths on every door. But I read it was not Christmas time. I don't yeah, know on I read. fucking Wikipedia, where any tool shed <laughs> could go in there and say this doesn't meet notability <laughs> guidelines. It's fucking snowing. It's Christmas time. Maybe it's right after Christmas or right before. But um, well, she's like, "Here's this car. Don't mind the mothballs." She refuses to pay him. Instead, mm-hmm. she gives him the car. And as we mentioned, the car was how they smuggled the uh, the spies smuggled the computer chip out of he walks away, Silicon yeah. Valley. He walks away, scratching so he, his body. Scratching. Going, Geez, those moth those butt. mothballs stink. Did you, have a, home. did you have a grandfather or aunt who had mothballs? Do you know what I'm even talking about with that smell? I think you I, don't. Yes. I know. Okay. My great-grandmother had uh, a trunk that had mothballs in it. When she would lock me in there, the <laughs> smell would overwhelm me. What was with the, that generation of mothballs? It's everywhere. I don't, you know, I'll everywhere. tell you something, Their Tim. closets, their pockets. Well, I, you know, I have, for my sister's wedding, I was wearing like this, like a suit I'd worn to my brother's wedding. And we noticed that there was holes bitten in the knees oh, from fucking moths. Really? They still exist? Yeah. They, moths they are a problem. They've eaten a lot of my shit. That generation was like tuberculosis, Spanish flu, and, and moths. That was their yeah, top and, three fears. And, <laughs> our generation, although you and I, you're a baby boomer, right? I don't even know. I don't see categories. <laughs> our go. generation, we're, we're afraid of um, clowns, quicksand, and nuclear war. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would say that's like the Generation X sort of. So these bad guys are so serious. They rent a house in the neighborhood because they know it's one of the houses and they don't know which one. Yeah. All they knew is that they, they actually, because they were, they're pretty good. When they figure out that she has it, they do some like daring do through the airport. And one of them is able to photograph the cab 
yeah. like a secret camera he has in his glove to get the uh, license plate of the cab. So then they find the cab guy and they kind of rough him up. And he says it was the only sho- non shovel driveway in the neighborhood. Oh, that's right. I forgot that guy. So they get to, that they was get like to there, Stan but of course, Lee. That was his cameo. That guy looked that like Stan Stanley. Lee. <laughs> he was like, Excelsior. Enough said. Roy Thomas, you're taking credit for things you shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Roy says he created the character of uh, Kevin. Stan Lee. And oh. Home Alone. No, Kevin and Home Alone. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they, they're, st- they're staking out this house and they're doing like very um, good way. They're just do- systematically breaking into the houses while everyone's at work or school. And, you know, we mentioned that little Alex was digging at his, himself all scratch and shit. They have a weird joke. Turns out that little fucker, that little fucker's got chicken pox. Hey, or chicken spots. Did they say chicken spots? They said it. Really? They they reveal it in a weird joke. There's there's several okay. weird uh, penis Let's jokes. Let's hear this joke. I don't remember. Wait. You don't remember? <gasps> remember he he took off his clothes oh, in yes. front of the mirror and he goes, "I hope I don't have them." And that was the shocking shock shot. Instead of putting uh, aftershave on like Kevin did, he did that thing. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Tim's being so vague. I'm just no. gonna step up and do it. Yeah. yeah. Chicken so he's says. he's we're we're not seeing his this. thing. So. <laughs> He's he's this little guy is just the right height that if you're familiar with the way American toilets are set up, there's a guillotine like lid, right? <laughs> yes. So apparently his little thing, which is the term they kept using, is just the right height that it kind of dangles over the ledge when he's just sitting there, which is gross. Yeah. And the lid comes down and smacks it and he does a scream. No, and but- then they cut to they cut to the family, like everyone hearing. And Scarlett Johansson's first line in the movie, like, Kevin smashed his thing again. I know. This is weird that they all know he does this all the time. <laughs> I think it's actually something he does on purpose. I think when he became an adult, it became a problematic behavior. Well, he's a genius, but maybe he has no common sense. He's one of those geniuses. Just uh, Yeah. Like Roy Thomas. Cut that one out. Cut that one out. <laughs> but you're mixing it uh, up. Were you high when you watched this? No, the no. reason he screamed was... He took his clothes off and he, he's looking at his chicken pox and he goes, I hope I don't have it down. And he looks down at his penis and then he slaps mm-hmm. his face and screams just like Kevin did in the original movie. Oh, I, you know what? I actually looked away for a little bit because I was writing a note or something. Mm-hmm. So I thought that the thing actually did just fall into uh, like a guillotine. No, it's the chicken no. pox. Because then the next scene, they're all like, he's staying home. Blah, blah, so the blah. other, yeah. So and actually, I thought that was in, like you know after all like the, the crazy hoops that in the first two movies they go through, so that Kevin gets left alone places. Mm-hmm. This one just is like, yeah, he's just home home alone with That's, chicken pox. Yes. <laughs> His mom has a job where she has to like write things and run meetings and stuff like remotely. So write, write things, but there's some sort of special meeting, so she keeps having to run out, and then all the shit happens during that. His brother has a parrot so, that that talks. His by has the way, a, a shitty parrot, and he has a rat. Parrot. And Dolores, what was his parrot's name? Uh, Doris? I call it Polly. Polly's the name of the one. Yeah. It screams. Polly Amorous? For, f- sports stuff. Uh. Who did the voice of the parrot? <laughs> we better Darren, get through this. Darren, Darren Knaus. Darren. Darren Knaus, the voice of the parrot. They keep playing. The parrot mm? sucked. Yeah. No, it's not the parrot's fault. It is the parrot's fault. The parrot wrote its own dialogue <laughs> I was reading. Did you check the uh, Wikipedia for Did he have a, was he blue by his name? Did he appear in, um. Any yeah, he has movies? a blue link. He he plays Grogu in The Mandalorian. Okay, thought so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. We usually talk about the year these movies come out in relation to the year the original Star Wars came out, but this is so far after. So far after, it yeah. just doesn't thrill me. But is it 98? Isn't that, when did the prequels start? That doesn't matter. The what? The prequels. The what? What are you talking about? The prequels. <laughs> so. The Beatles have been split up for 28 years. <laughs> What? Wait, did I do the math right? <laughs> Don't you do that as one? The Beatles split up? Yeah, for like, that's uh, oh, 10, 20, almost 29, Folks, is, 29 years, right? You can see Tim is confused because Tim makes no reference more recent than 1977. <laughs> so he just doesn't know even what to do with this. No. It's like 98. That's, it might as well have been now. We were it could be happening our... as we speak. So Alex, when everybody goes out, he spies like Jimmy Stewart. Got another Jimmy Stewart. Yep, another it's photographer. Def- he's he's zipped there with his uh, with his um, telescope, staring at people. He's sparing, He's creep. trying to creep on the old lady, like yeah. she's getting in the shower, and he's like, "Yes." And he's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yeah." yeah. <laughs> and he actually, he's such a genius. He can turn her channel from his. He zaps her TV. 
Yeah, he invents a way that? of like remote. Yeah, but that didn't really play off. Weirdly. She was trying to watch. Well, she was trying to watch Dancing, and he turned it to a documentary about the assassination of Franz Duke Ferdinand, and she started to cry because she remembers that day. That was, <laughs> she was a child that day. She remembers that day. Her family outhouse blew away. What happened to uh, No More Zapruder film? <laughs> She's too old. She's way too old for Zapruder film. Okay. Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, there is a scene it, like yeah mrs hess the woman who's um, like the old lady there's always an old lady when these films are old man mm-hmm. scary old person yeah he just person. he's remote changing her channel from like a long distance yeah don't know why doesn't really you think that would play in as a part it's a in, joke like, his George. Adventure. it's a joke he's a jokester yeah, but he's, he's a he's a little he's a little rap scallion. she walks away he turns the channel she walks back in turns it just like that bugs bunny thing and then he turns off the, her lights and she falls Breaks her hip. <laughs> breaks her hip, like, lays her in the dark, crying. <laughs> it's good. It's a funny joke. So uh, he sees the bad guys breaking into houses and walking around. Yeah, basically. And he calls the he calls the cops. Yep. Cops show up. Uh, it's very dramatic. He's like, yeah, they he's run like, up with guns pulled. They break kick down, down a door. Yeah, they're not supposed to break down doors of houses like that. Also, why would you like? Man, they don't need to. I mean, okay, like so. Granted, this is a wealthy neighborhood, so maybe in a wealthy neighborhood, the cops behave like this way, like. Oh no! A rich person is getting their shit stolen. I know. Like they just run in, like they, they, these two cops pull the guns, kick the door down in front of the whole neighborhood. Which they also made a point of saying how like, there's nobody home, but everybody sees this. That's right. And so they come, they come back. <laughs> like the the these the agents because they like they they one of the agents dresses up uh, these spies, I should say. One of the spies dresses up as an old guy and is walking through the neighborhood. That's right. He does the old man. The lady, <laughs> the lady is always jogging with like a doll in a baby carriage. Yeah, feel. <laughs> Uh, the old guy runs into Alex. He's like, hello, I'm Mark Twain. <laughs> that was the character he's playing. <laughs> he did look like Mark Twain a bit. So anyway, the cops are like, they're like, nobody was in there because these guys were really good. They kept all, you know, they, they hid all signs of them being in this house because they were looking for this house to find the car. Yep. And so Kevin's mom comes home. She's Yells super embarrassed. Him. The cops are like, <clears throat> you can't do it. And he's like, and he's, he, I keep saying Kevin. He's not Kevin. Yeah, he's, he's Alex. Alex. And Alex is like, okay, you don't want me to be a good citizen? Okay, Sheriff. Being a real little shit. And so... She says he... The mom's like... Yeah. The mom says what? That he's been terrible since they gave him the toy police set. Remember that? Because he was giving tickets to people for leaving their toilet seat up. I'm like, how do you know? Here you go. <laughs> Who's leaving the toilet seat Does it really seat? say that? Because that's yes, actually that's interesting. She says that. That. Cu- that ties into the whole guillotine on his thing. Yeah. Yeah. He gave a ticket to... I don't know. Somebody. Scarlett Johansson and the other guy make fun of him. They'll be like, hey, you little wiener, you little wiener. Mm-hmm. And then it's the next day and they break into another house. Yep. He's like, uh, what's he do this time? He just calls the police again, right? He does it twice. Uh, doesn't this time, this is the one where he has actually, he doesn't realize that they're after the car yet. No. So he has actually strapped a video camera to the car so he can get. I think that's like the it. third day. Because he's that's so, what he's, yeah he calls the, the he, cops he gets come in trouble again. again though, and they they oh he hides like Spider Man, he is in the house remember did you they no. went to the basement he was squished up into the 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 basement ceiling you blinked like Spider Man just like Spider Man Spider Man wait does Spider Man squish up in your basement the, the first Spider Man remember when it, no. the blood dropped on the floor and Green Goblin's like who's here and he looks up but oh. Spider Man's outside on the ceiling on the Oh, that sounds familiar. Wow. There is that similar scene in this movie. You remember when Alex is riding on the front of one of the elevated trains in Chicago? Yes. And it's out of control, <laughs> and he shoots two webs out, and he tries to hold the trains, but just rips his little arms off. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. They weren't weird webs. Scene. They were the little things on his belt like Data did in Goonies. Yeah, yeah just little like <laughs> suction cups, but his arms are torn off. <laughs> yes. Luckily, they grow bad. <laughs> they do. Yeah, so he calls the cops a couple times. This is going to be a hard plot to talk about because basically, eventually, rest, yeah, he, he's hard. figuring it out. He realizes he can't go to the cops because they don't believe him. He figures everything out. A computer he chip does falls open, out of the car. And if he I, gets the, he yeah. finds the computer chip. There's a number that says U.S. Air Force on it. He calls the Air Force recruitment Recruiter. thing near him, tells him about it, and the Air Force guy is like, look, listen, little boy, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, well, look, you <laughs> must know somebody. Can you just check? There's this number. Just ask about it. He's like, okay. Setting things into motion. And the guy's like, so the guy actually does. <laughs> wow. And eventually it gets back to the government that, like, yeah, this missing missile technology, this is it. So that's just going to come into the end. We're not going to remember to keep up with this. No. So he, I guess the third house, he does, they, they steal his friend's dog at some point, remember? 
Yeah, but he does send his remote control car. That's a big part mm-hmm. of the movie. He's a, he's a genius. The camera's on it. This car can go across the street and work. This is the best remote car that ever lived. Yes. Goes. He's up in the third floor of his house watching all this stuff. And like, like it's like he leads them on this crazy. Yeah. Tr- like chase journey. down the road. And the guy in the car runs over Mark Twain. You know, this is ah. when we fart. We, we <clears throat> fart. This is when we start seeing like the cartoonish violence that these movies are famous for. Cause up until now, these guys seem like efficient, deadly killers. <laughs> yes. And like, you know, they, they're getting amusingly hit by cars and, crashing through walls and stuff like isn't it try- funny uh, that the last time this was funny was the three stooges and just suddenly the 90s are like let's do this again <laughs> i think that I mean, I, hmm. that's basically what you it know, is three stooges you're forgetting a little movie called evil dead 2 well yeah he referenced it yep and that was the that was because i feel like evil dead 2 has a lot to do with home alone <laughs> You do. It's a guy alone in a house being besieged by outside forces. Mm. He sets up various traps and booby traps. He has to rely mm. on his ingenuity. It's a series of events and attacks. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of a they movie both have- called Star Wars where Darth Vader's in his, his <laughs> fortress and his people are coming in and no, they fall in the garbage and they get all wet I, in the garbage. Like, oh, garbage. And they get hit If I didn't watch a movie with you every week, Tim, I would think you never saw any movie but Star Wars. I wasn't even there to see you watch Deadpool vs. Wolverine. No, it didn't happen. I fell asleep in my chair. This chair's laying back too far. I'm just going... Gene said, wake up. He's saying bubbles. He didn't say bub. <laughs> He's saying bubka. He's at a Russian bakery. Yes. Um, so, they, so yeah, that's so a basically, big yeah. And they, he gets away, <clears throat> but he, he was actually supposed to be filming. And like, I guess the tape was fell out. Something happened with the tape. I th- oh, they got the tape. Did, they they got the it. tape. Yeah. Ooh. So they, they <clears throat> figure out he's got the thing. They know that they're up against this genius boy. Um, Cause he <clears throat> figures it all out. If a computer yeah, chip fi- fell out of my toy car, I'd be like, ah, oh, shit. I'd be like, I better busted. put this back in. It must yeah. be how the car works. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I thought that was weird, too. Um, and I should, it's like a circuit board. It doesn't look like super, like, no. it was the 90s. Why not make it a CD? I, yeah. I guess, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just it, catching I, it up did, here. It did, I'll be, I didn't think it looked unique enough that I, as a kid, would be like, huh. But this kid but, is a genius. But he sets up all these traps. And this house is an elevator. I was shocked. Did him an a elevator. Dumb waiter. A dumb waiter. I know, yeah. but still. I'm like, oh boy, it's gonna be like, like oh boy, oh boy, it's gonna be like uh, Die Hard. So yeah, so the, the, we set the they set the ground for the big showdown. We're gonna skip, skip, skip ten. The bad guys have determined he has it because they saw him with the car. Um, mm-hmm. They actually further get more information where the woman pretends to be the friend of his parent and calls. They know the mom's gonna be out at a certain time. The dad is stuck at the airport because it's snowing. They send the old lady to the babysitter. Is what you're saying, right? Oh, they, 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 they break into the old lady's house and kind of brutalize her. That was pretty messed well, no, up. She's going to go to the babysit and they say, oh, okay, I think my package is in your garage. And then they tie her up. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah leave, and they tie her up they and leave, leave the door the open. And she, for and she, a, not, she dies. So a bear can come dies. eat her. And a bear comes and eats her face. Uh, since, we're, and then, since we're rushing through this, yeah, I just have well, one other list. Are we missing list. any points? Yeah. No, oh, it doesn't a matter. A list. Because this movie is all about being left alone. And I'm going to tell you some famous people, George, who are left alone. Oh, no. And you tell me if it worked out okay. Because mm-hmm. it's worked out okay for these kids for three movies. Spoilers. How about some famous people? So, okay. There's this guy. He spent a lot of time alone in his backyard shed that his dad made for him. His name was Jeffrey Dahmer. Do you think things worked out okay for him being home alone a lot? Yeah. I think that he had a happy okay. ending, right? <laughs> yeah. You got beat up as a pipe after eating a bunch of people. Yeah, that worked out well. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. After maybe he killed his brother and his mom, mom died at Gein. He was all alone for a long. <laughs> These all gonna be serial killers. <laughs> Did things work out okay for him? <laughs> yeah, he made a nipple belt. <laughs> no one broke into his house. I don't think. Nope. No, they did after he. Uh, <laughs> yes. After he got when he got caught, they sure did. That's they, they sure found the did. Nipple belt. Yep. Okay, and how about uh, Anthony Kiedis, lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers? He's like sixty-one mm-hmm. years old and lonely, and he, he's. <laughs> He's got to hang out with a 20-year-old girl. I think that's going to work out okay for him. That's how lonely he is. He just can't meet people. What What could they possibly have to talk to about with each other? (laughs) Sorry, Anthony. Don't beat me up because you could. That that is fun. Like, do you think, Tim, side question, do you think if it came down to you 
fighting any member of the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Is there any one of them you feel like you could confidently take in a fight? No, I don't think so. You know, Flea Flea has the jumping ability of his namesake. He's able to, like, in a standing jump, he's able to jump over the Empire State Building. Well, maybe if he was, if he was, yeah, that is true. It's a true fact about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I know some things, George, not all Beatle facts. So, yeah, so then finally they just launched their assault on the house. And this they, kid has done some crazy shit. He all is, the usual uh, things. Ele- no, this is more than what Kevin does. He, he electrocutes them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of testicular and ass trauma to these people. <laughs> we dropped the barbell on them. That would crush their skulls. He, well, yeah. So the two, like Mr. Bupre and um, the guy who is married to Cindy Lauper, like first, they, he puts a trap there in the front of the house. They notice it. They're already both fucked up. No, actually, Mr. Bupre's not fucked up yet. No. The other guy's already really been fucked up. He first drops a fucking wardrobe on them. Yes. They're knocked <laughs> unconscious for a time. They wake up, and then he drops a barbell at the third floor. No. And hits both of them. And also knocks them unconscious. These guys have multiple concussions. <laughs> Uh, the woman, uh, she gets dragged by a dog through a fence. She falls in mud, unconscious. Falls I'm like, in mud. You're going to suffocate. Yeah, she's unconscious <laughs> in the mud. Uh, the Sidney Lopper's husband gets like white powder. Yeah, he gets pie, fa- him. pie face, white face clown. Looks like a clown. Yeah, there's, he spray paints the leader's face through the mail slot, so he looks like a raccoon. Oh, the, the, um, uh, the one guy gets punched in the balls. He's got a trap for that, of course, by the closet. Get, well, the leader gets punched in the balls. He also sets the pants on fire of the guy that kind of looks like yes. Alec Baldwin. And then later his pet rat gets in there. That, that was weird. And that was very weird. Cause like Alex the taught the pet rat to run up his leg and go into his crotch. And, sit, and he had a hole he in his crotch. He has a big hole in his crotch. Uh, and the lady sees it. And she grabs joke. like a club and just smacks this guy in the crotch and then just keeps whacking him. And the rat, I mean, Alex really risks his rat's life. Yes. His rat's his only friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the rat gets away. Uh, this is the most crazy one to me. He actually, the only way he leads into the house is the third floor, like the attic where he's been conducting most of his attacks from. I saw that. But he has actually pulled out the floor and covered it with a carpet. Uh huh. So when they jump through the window, they plummet through three floors of his house into the basement. <laughs> Seems like five stories, but yeah. How are they not dead? <laughs> I mean, so much of the stuff should kill them. And then They're he pulled a lawnmower on his, on his head too. Yeah. Cut his hair. Yeah. That's all it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah there's the sh- there's the uh the jet propelled thing into the guy's crotch um oh and at one point they swap guns because he has a toy gun and the guy has a real gun and they happen to look the same that was a bit of tension yeah. a little bit of tension well, kevin kevin spray paints his black which i thought was a good intent because he had a little orange one right. i kept saying kevin alex, alex. <laughs> but like yeah these guys this is another depart like these guys are literally trying to kill him they have guns they're going to shoot this little kid yeah and uh, she falls down the shaft. That, that you can see that no elevator there. That didn't make sense to me. Did you? Did you notice she um, she got in the elevator he, with the shaft open? He, he already took the elevator down. I know it didn't make and sense. And she just climbs in there. Like that's not even a trap. She's just an idiot. Yes. She literally because they there's a part when they they the three of them get up into the um, attic to get him, and they they see that they he's seem to be stuck there. Yeah. And they're like, I guess they can't get down somehow. So they jump onto the trampoline, which is actually over the pool. So they fall into the frozen pool. And drowned. And the girl's like, oh, I'll go down the dumbwaiter. I must have really got there. Now, you know, he took the dumbwaiter down. Yes. So she just hops down the shift and falls into the basement. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> Didn't make any sense. Why am I laughing? <laughs> it's, it's. I like when he sends the dun- wait, dun- waiter down and they, and they hear it go ding. And they're like, uh-oh. And it opens up, and, and it, it says, "It says, ha ha! Now I have a gun." And it's like one of the dead. <laughs> now I have a gun. <laughs> one of the, it's dead in there. So, so he runs across and the street and saves the old lady, and he has a showdown with the one man who's hiding in the coats. That was creepy. Yeah. He morphed. Oh, that part's. He morphed out of the coats like T two. Yeah, or like Homer Simpson from the bushes. <laughs> right. And so, like, yeah, here's here's little Alex. Like this kid's like five years old, maybe having a face down with this like scary, like James Bond villain sort of motherfucker. And the guy has a gun mm-hmm. and Alex realizes he's got the fake gun. Yep. And he, and the guy's like, huh? And then Alex pulls out what is the real gun. I'm like, Oh my God. No, it was fake also, have... but 
but I, well, that was what was Tim. Spoilers. We don't know. That. We don't know that. <laughs> shoots bubbles. You think that this is gonna be a movie where this little kid shoots him and the guy runs out and he blows bubbles? He's like, I'm such a little stinker. <laughs> and while this is going on, we should mention that there's been a whole thing where the family finds out from the FBI that like they were yeah they're on their way looking for they're on their way and they're. There's a scene where like Scarlett Johansson she and the gets brother line. Be she gets attitude. her dramatic yeah. scene. What does she say? She goes, "This is my little brother. We're talking about. You better tell us what's going on." And F- I think she says, "I got red in my ledger and I want to get it out." <laughs> yes, that's, that's, some, that's some, yeah. And then she shoots a, a widow's bite and knocks the guy <laughs> unconscious. Uh, and they, they give in. <laughs> yeah. So nine thousand cop cars come on, like they they descend on the house, and there's the three. There's Alice. Uh, Mr. Jurgen and Sin- Mr. Lopper are laying there like just mutilated. They've just been <laughs> just they should be dead. They should be dead. And they they car- <laughs> they they carry them out like I think the lady's even stuck in some weird position. Yeah, a bear has eaten one of her legs. Yeah, yeah, she's like missing limbs. <laughs> He's given her. And the only and the only one missing is the leader, and the leader is hiding in a shed right around the corner. And these cops are just bad enough; he'd probably An get away. Igloo. Then an this- igloo. Oh, is it the igloo he's in? Yeah. And then in comes the stupid fucking parrot. Parrot. And the parrot's like, I'm going to return you in. He goes, and for some reason, the guy's a cracker. Yes. And he holds up the cracker. And the parrot goes, double or nothing. He goes, I only have one. And he calls for help. And then the cops arrest him. Yeah, why do you have one cracker? I, that's, I feel like there was probably something that you and I didn't pay attention to. Or like this guy always carries a cracker. He probably, I would bet, Tim, he probably always carries two crackers. And there's a scene where, like, for some reason, he has to give a cracker to one of the people. And he's like, I hope I don't <laughs> need that cracker later. <laughs> they had to bite down so, on a cracker when he's had to amputate one of their legs. It's got infected. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so movie ends where we, we <laughs> the family all come back and they're all like, Alex, you're a hero, and Scarlett Johansson's like, and I was so excited for a George's current currency kerner. Oh, but all we learn is that he's being paid a six figure sum. Really? So yeah, he's being paid somewhere between a hundred thousand and nine hundred ninety nine thousand mm. ninety nine dollars and ninety. Who is being paid this, George? You lost me, Alex. For this movie? No, for for <laughs> catching these spies. Oh, and sa- I totally missed basically that. Basically, saving the lives of millions of innocent Americans. I, okay, I guess it's good. He got yep. a reward. Yep, and the old lady's with them. She's friendly now. She, she's not. She's old friendly friend. now. She loves them. We she, like the old lady now. She tells her and kid about how him having chicken pox reminds her of when you know. When she was a chicken. When she rode the first elevator during the Civil War. Was it the civil? Was it, it the elevator in Chicago? No, it was the. You know, it was the English Civil War, sixteen hundred. Engl- oh wow! <laughs> anyway, she was. Like, she was like, I was old only joke. fifty years old then. <laughs> Ages. Yeah, the jokes. Are, yep. <laughs> So and uh, talked yeah, about, uh, talked about that. Talked about Star his Wars. His dad comes home from the airport. His dad gives him the same car. He's like, "You know how to ride this sport?" He's like, "I think I know, Dad. Did you watch the same movie I was in?" <laughs> and then the movie ends with a bunch of fucking mug shots <laughs> yes. of like the four criminals being arrested. Oh, and then after after credit scene, Alex goes up to his bathroom and he drops the lid on his thing. You hear him and, but, scream. But then the old lady realizes he actually dropped it on his penis. And everybody's like, Woof. "Like we." Like in this house, we call it a thing, Mrs. Hess, and they lock her in the garage with the door open, and she freezes to death. The end. Hope those bears don't come around. <laughs> they put peanut butter on her toes. <laughs> wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Revenge. One of us will die. One of us will die. Oh, Who from this movie? Will, quick. We talked an hour. Most likely to go to Greece and get run down by a trolley. Well, that had to be Mrs. Hess when she was younger. Oh, I would say it's any one of the fucking spies looking like they're right. world travelers. And uh, Do you think they get hit by cars <laughs> left and right in this movie. So why not? Or you're saying that, that Alex went on a trip to Greece and he had a secret uh, chip uh, that they wanted and he got on a trolley car. And the whole movie t- is a combination of speed and Home Alone. <gasps> it's called uh, uh, Speed Alone. I don't know. I, there's no good title for that. That's bad. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> speed. See, it's well, that's a combo movie. You should do that. That isn't. That's hot. You know, Tim. <clears throat> if we could get you into like in front of like the right people in Hollywood, you'd be like, "Here's the here's the high concept pitch: Speed meets Home Alone." If the trolley goes slower than three miles an hour, uh, it'll 
<laughs> grind to a halt. The, the trolley's got <laughs> it's it's twelve feet long. It seats eighteen people. It goes three miles per hour. If it ever stops, Chicago explodes. We did it. We did it. We're we done. It. You know, George. Yep. If people listening watched our episode called Mayor Cupcake, and why wouldn't you? You reminded me. We forgot something I thought was very strange. At the end of that movie, their their credits, mm-hmm. their credit scene. This was about a mayor who made cupcakes. The credit scene was all the actors trying to put the cupcakes in their mouth. Did you notice that? And some of them hit themselves in the head. Some of them couldn't Wait. do it. And they were just like, wah, I can't get it in my mouth. Some put it in their Wait, mouth. Are they, are they throwing it at their heads? or they Some just of them were like, like how do difficult? I do this? It was like they told everybody to sit down and pretend you don't know how to put a cupcake in your mouth. I no. <laughs> forgot to mention it. Wait, really? Yes. I must have turned off before the credits. So wait, it's just characters sitting there eating cupcakes and just like yep. failing to insert the food in their mouth? Yes, that's what it was. What? Anyway, we're not talking anyway. about Mayor Cupcake. You want no, me to go add first? That bit. No, I'm going to go first. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm going to keep this one short and sweet because there Good. really wasn't much plot here. Yeah. Nope, short and sweet like a cupcake. Uh, you know who's, yeah. Which so one? Alex, you know, he's given his uh, his $600,000, let's say a six-figure $600,000 reward. Okay. His family, you know, already pretty well healed, it seems. They invested wisely. He's kind of set. He's just like, I'm living a pretty cool life. One of his neighbors, the next block over, none other than Kevin fucking McAllister. Oh, he's jealous. And he looks, he's like, what the fuck? That was, that was supposed to be my movie. That was supposed to be my battle against these criminals. That was supposed to be my money. Yes. He launches a campaign of terror. <laughs> yeah, he takes a big cutout of Michael Jordan, <laughs> sticks it on a train track, makes it go right over to the Dupri- Dupruit, whatever the fuck I, Alex's family's name is, house. I'm going to forget yep. to ask you this. Yes. Let's see, what year was this? 98? Lord of the Rings yep. was until 2005. Okay. Oh, because if, if he wanted to be in Home Alone 3, he, I was wondering if that technology that... that that they used to make people look like they're hobbits. He could use that and he could play Kevin one more time. Anyway, I just wanted to ask if maybe he thought of that. Thanks for derailing my story for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. So that these two rap scallions just didn't create like, you know, this is a teenage Kevin McAllister. He's lost some of that youthful spunk. But he'll be damned if he's gonna let this little Alex shit take his thing. They launched this battle across the neighborhoods with little pranks. Mm-hmm. Everything you could picture from like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Dangerous pranks. Put up duck season, rat se- like rabbit season signs, singing frogs. Wouldn't it be Kevin season? Martians. All shit like this. It goes on and on and on. And finally, Kevin's like, <clears throat> Kevin knows a little bit about breaking into a house, you know? Yeah. He goes and breaks into the Pruitt house. And he's not messing around. He just has a fucking gun. He's going to put two... In the back of little Alex's head, wow. and one in his thing. It's getting ugly. <laughs> and yeah, it's rough. He shoots. He he shoots the parrot. Oh, the parrot. He grabs the rat. He bites his head off. Oh. And Alex and him, their powers almost cancel each other. Alex is just sitting there scrambling, not knowing what to do. Right. Right. And just when all seems lost, Scarlett Johansson drops down from the ceiling. Oh, God. Does this crazy move on him and throws Kevin through the window where he plummets 50 stories down yep. like the guy from <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> yep. Lands oh, like, on a Buick. He could have fallen like Luke Skywalker in uh, Empire Strikes Back after he had No, because then he'd, be, then he'd land on the, Emp- on the Millennium Falcon. Yes. He'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Nah. He hits and he explodes. What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He oh, explodes. did he explode because one of the tricks they played, he left out Kevin feed and he ran up to it like the Roadrunner, ate all the Kevin feed, but it was actually gunpowder. Yep. Yep. I That's knew exactly it. What happened. I knew it. Yeah. Sorry. And then they're so excited to see him exploding that they run to the window to see, but they run into a wall because Kevin, Kevin. had painted a lifelike window <laughs> and they're both killed and everybody dies. The end. Nice. I like yep. that one. And I call this movie, you want to guess? Uh, uh, s- s- speed Alone. Avengers no. Endgame. Avengers Endgame. Yep. Wow. Yep. I hopefully, hopefully they don't get brought back. Oh, you know, did I mention that Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. played all the parts right. in this too? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, I interrupted uh, you, so you're probably going to interrupt me, but I'm going to try well, to... I'm going to interrupt the fuck out of stick, you. This story is going to... This story is going off the tracks harder... Then a streetcar built Named in Desire. 1870. Yeah. I interrupted you twice. Maybe we should keep track mm-hmm. that way. Because mm-hmm. this is a good story. So he's yep. a genius, right? 
Uh -huh. So Alex becomes the youngest exchange student to be sent to England. You know, he's he, all that stuff he figured out. That he's he has pretty sure it's already happened at this point. But yeah, he's okay. like eleven now. How how old yep. is he in this movie? I you know it's hard to tell. Ten. He looks nine or he's, ten. He's the he's the right. He seemed really young. He's the right age that he, if he's standing up, his thing would get caught in a <laughs> <Yeah>. falling <laughs> toilet lid. However old that is. So. He goes to England as the youngest exchange student, and his host family, they leave him home alone because they have to go out, ride the double-decker down to the pub, and cheer on the local football team. At the loo? No, the local pub. They do go in the loo, the loo? after they drink. So do they? Do they stick? Do they stick Alex in the lorry? <laughs> yes, they do. In the boot? No, he stays home alone. Oh yes. He's got to study. But wouldn't you know it, next door, there's two Nazi sleeper agents, Franz and what? Die Spiegel. And they hear about this American kid, and they know all about Americans. What, what does every American have, George? Uh, a pouch. No, a gun. They need a gun. Gun. They oh. don't have a gun in, in England. You're not allowed to have them. And they want to steal this kid's gun and get revenge okay. on England. I have a question. Because they get a, yeah, revenge on England for beating them in the war. Yes. <clears throat> in Captain America, the first Avenger, how did you feel about the replacement of the Nazis with largely being Hydra? How did I that hated make you it. feel? I hate that. Did you hate yeah. it? Whitewashing. I whitewashing. Hate whitewashing. You hate, but Hydra's kind of wears green. Yep. Explain that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what about the red skull? Is he white? He's red. He's, uh, I better not say anything. Spoilers. Yeah. Mm. yeah spoilers. Mm. What? Uh, Deadpool. Deadpool. <laughs> So they want to sneak Does in. Does Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah. play the Red Skull? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Which is odd. I mean, you can't tell it's him yeah. under there. They just said it was him. Yeah. It's like, hey, but it's <clears throat> Robert Downey Jr. So they try to sneak in mm -hmm. while the family mm -hmm. is out. But Alex sees them coming and he drops. Is the family the... a name? We... Have you said the family's name? Uh, the, the McAllisters. No. Oh, wait. <clears throat> they're, they're, the British families, the McAllisters? Yeah. They Im immigrated. Oh. Weird. So, uh, not the best. He drops, <laughs> not the best. <laughs> be These best. guys are better. Okay. Oh, he the better. He sees them and he, he drops a rubbish bin on Franz on, on his head mm -hmm. from the roof. So, Franz's mm -hmm. head is split open, blood is everywhere, and just Spiegel drags <laughs> him to the local hospital where they have socialized health care. He gets all stitched oh, up. They can't save his socialists. They can't save his eye. Uh, oh. and he drools all the time and he can no longer smell. So, he's, oh my god, is this, the, is this how Popeye came about? Yeah. Sticks them in a wheelchair and they go, let's get back to that. Uh -huh. Next night, they go right. back to that house while the family's out watching mm -hmm. the king ride his horse back and forth down Penny Lane because that's what they do. <laughs> <laughs> but Alex is ready this time. He puts the kettle on, he fills it with a pot of hot tea, gets some crump uh -huh. crumpets and beans ready, and then he trains his hedgehog. <clears throat> I have a question. Yes. He puts the kettle on mm -hmm. and fills the kettle with a pot of hot tea? Yes, he does. Does he not understand how this works? <laughs> he, he made a pot of hot tea. Then he went to the kettle, put it in the kettle. Okay, okay. All right. He's a genius, but he doesn't have common sense. <laughs> oh, you did mention that. Okay, this tracks. So then he sets up all these traps, and then he goes out to the old bomb shelter where there's old mm -hmm. cans of beans and an issue of British Playboy, which is called Ladies With Their Knickers Down. And he just waits. <laughs> Centerfold is Miss uh, Madison Huxley. Madison Huxley, huh? Her turn-ons are Ringo, her turn-offs are Pete Best. So anyway... Man, that Pete just can't catch a break. <laughs> Franz and De Spiegel, they break in, step in the hot, the, the hot tea falls in their head. They get third degree burns and part of his, De Spiegel's face melts off. <laughs> they scream at pain. <gasps> and then they turn on the television. They turn on the telly because Alex left Oh my note. God, is the Ark of the Covenant on the television and they melt even more? <laughs> That'd be good if you could get that. That would be good. Yeah. But they want to turn on the telly to, to BBC4 because there's a Benny Hill special on. But Alex has hooked up the electrical cord to the, to the, the knob. And Franz's fingers get burned, and one of them falls off as he screams in horror. And uh, the pet hedgehog comes, <laughs> chase, grabs that finger, and runs off with it. I like that you just said not not a hedgehog, <laughs> the hedgehog. You know that the, the every English home has a hedgehog. So they see the crumpets you left out, and they have to mm -hmm. eat them. And they're laced with hog tranquilizer and LSD. Do they so, have to eat them because the British person has yes, to eat a they crumpet? Have to eat them. It's like a compulsion. So they both start tripping. De Spiegel yeah. suffer, suffers a horrible stroke and falls, comically hitting his head against the metal rubbish tin, causing blood to gush everywhere as his head breaks open and his body shakes and gurgles as he you know, tries to breathe. 
Franz. Didn't he already? Franz wasn't he already in a wheelchair? <laughs> no, Franz was. Oh, it was a Franz. But Franz, Franz was, okay. strips naked, runs out the door and down the street till he falls in the ocean, cutting himself on rusted fortifications left over from World War II, and crabs eat his face while he screams hideously. So, and meanwhile, Mac. How did Alex, he run if he was in a wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> the wheelchair. <laughs> The wheelchair was outside. Why was he George. naked too? Was that a Benny Hill reference? <laughs> no. So he, <laughs> Alex, just sat in the bunker and read. You know, he didn't have to do a thing. If that was he, and the parents didn't know anything happened. <clears throat> this movie. I didn't come up with the name of this movie. Mm. Home Alone Part Four. This time it's personal. <clears throat> Home Alone Part Four is already called uh, Taking Back the House. That's that's what it's called. Yes, Taking Back the House. Yeah, there's a Home Alone Five too. I didn't read what that's about. Taking Back My Country. Take... <laughs> the parents came home. <laughs> they cleaned. You know, he cleaned up the mess before the parents came home. How about Home Alone Seven <clears throat> Brexit? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. We talked a long We're time. We're a good podcast. We are. Yep. We did. Those are two I mean, good stories. Just... Two good stories. I already forgot mine. You know what's cool? <laughs> I know like a Kevin blew up because he ate like... Kevin's seed. It was actually oh, yeah. gunpowder, George. Uh, of <laughs> Poor Kevin. So, I guess we should go. My, my entire it's... story was written down, it's Kevin. That was my entire story <laughs> idea. I'm like, okay. Good. It's Kevin. And no Cablasto Do... reference. Ooh. No Cablasto reference. Oh, shop at Needle Cablasto Drop right Records. Oh. Don't shop at yep. Needle Drop Records. Go down the street and shop at CD's Records and buy them. Tim, did we get any mail? Ooh, I'll check. Because Mr. Kevin Cablasto threatened. He liked our episode about Chud so much, he said, I'm going to write you a letter. He says a lot of things. Nope. No letter. Yep. No letter. The only people who write into us are actual Sorry. occasional hosts of the show. <laughs> so, yeah, write us. Mm-hmm. Write us, like us, write love us. us, leave us a review. I left reviews of yep. some other people's, and they left us reviews lately. And they said they yeah. liked our banter. Our, did they describe it as witty? Our witty banter. Or irritating? They liked our witty banter. Like, I like the way you two just talk over each other and don't listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I think we're very good at yes anding. She said, I like your stories about how you were a, a clue on Jeopardy. Tell more about Tell I, me more about that. I like how you mentioned Pete Best every <laughs> single episode because I feel like that guy, he had a rough time of it. It's good the way you punch <clears throat> down at him. Oh, I actually thought that today. It's like, I should stop punching down. <laughs> Talk about you know what? I will. I'm going to go out and. <clears throat> you know what? I bet you. You punched down on Roy Thomas. Ah, <clears throat> uh, is that punching down? So George, next yep. week, I mm-hmm. looked at IBDM. I clicked on the link. Or it, IMDb, as it might actually be it called. It told me. It told me this was filmed in Texas. Oh Jesus! <laughs> is it going to be a movie that's filmed in Massachusetts? Really? <laughs> I looked at Texas. We're going back to huh. to what I love. Too many new movies. Right, what's, What's the movie? You like the 60s. I hate the 60s. You like movies about swamp creatures because this is called Curse of the Swamp Creature. And I believe uh, this might actually... it's on YouTube if it's not on Tubi. I saw it on one of those. <clears throat> this might be what? Curse of the Swamp Creature. 1968. <clears throat> Looks amazing. All right. It's a TV movie. Looks amazing, Wolf. people. Oh, mine didn't look like a TV movie. It just looked super it independent. It literally says Curse of the Swamp Creature TV movie. I'll make sure I send you my link just to make sure. George, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We brought up Star Home Wars. Home Alone 3. Actually a film probably too good for Seti Bimko. Mm. <laughs> too many thing jokes. I was like, all right, enough of this. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of penis talk in this episode. <laughs> for once, we're not to blame. We're not. All right. Love us, like us. Right. Uh, send us letters. Seti Bimko with an E at gmail.com. You can do that. And go look at it. Holy up. shit. Wait, Tim. Yeah. We need to add something in. I just discovered. Holy shit. I just happened to look on the page for Home Alone 3 that I was about to close out, and I recognized a name. The FBI agent yeah. is played by Christopher Curry. That's Bosch from Chud. Really? Yes. Wow. Bosch from we Chud. Have to, oh I, I want to add a thing. We have to add this in the beginning. I'm sorry. <laughs> and most excitingly, I'm not that. you have to. Say it now. Again, most excitingly, this is to be inserted at the beginning. Most excitingly in the cast, what, George? the FBI agent Stucky. What? He was played by Christopher Curry, a.k.a. Captain Bosch oh from recent Sadie Bimco movie Chud. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, that's fucking amazing. This is the ah. best movie we've ever done in Seti Bimco. That's it. That's it. We gotta say goodbye. That's it. Yeah, all right, bye look, everybody. Look, yeah, look at our uh, lettered box page. You can see all the movies we've watched. Yeah. See us on all the yeah. uh, social media. That we're not actually on. See us the funny pages. Bye. Yeah. Bye. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party Line. It's a party line. Uh, let's see. Kevin Cablasto net worth. Is it in the negatives like J.D. Vance? Gotcha, J.D. Take that. <laughs> like his uh, guy, approval polls? Hey, Tim, that guy's weird, huh? He's negative. His approval polls are negative. I don't know if you saw great. that. I've already watched some... I'm a political is, junkie. <clears throat> is it possible that Kevin Cablasto's real last name is 